In this video, I'm going to show you how to get so much better at retinoscopy. It's a masterclass, so I'm assuming you know the basics. If you don't, this isn't the video for you. Come back when you've covered the theory elsewhere and had a few goes, maybe. This is part one of a two-part retinoscopy masterclass I've made for you. In this episode, we're going to cover some techniques that should make you better at this rather tricky skill that really does need quite a lot of practice to get good at. In the second episode, we're going to cover some points about your alignment and talk about cycloplegic retinoscopy in children. Retinoscopy is seen to be a bit of a black art, and it probably is. I've seen many refractionists struggle with it. They often say to me that they don't need to do retinoscopy anymore because they've got really good autorefractors these days. Also, they're often slow at it and pretty inaccurate too. So they start to think it's okay to miss it out. I really don't agree with them though. I like to know what sort of refraction I'm in for. If you see reflexes like this, you'll know that the refraction is going to be a bit of a struggle. When I was younger, I often jumped straight into refraction without doing retinoscopy, but I'm back to using it pretty much every time now. I don't get any nasty surprises that way, you see, although I suppose it depends on what type of patients you have. It's probably okay to jump straight in with young myopes, but you may end up missing an early keratoconic reflex. Also, with pre-presbyopic hypermetropes, uh, it really is a good idea to know how much plus there is. With practice, you can get good at it and accurate enough to prescribe from it if you need to in cases of poor subjective but it's not going to be easy it really does take a lot of practice to get any good at it i filmed my friend michael doing it he's a very experienced practitioner and we can learn a lot from watching him uh, i've animated the ret reflexes so that you can see what he's seeing uh, I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, his decision making and, and speed is, is really outstanding. Uh, after watching him, we'll go through the different techniques that he's using to get the job done in a quick and very accurate way. I enjoyed that. Uh, 1 minute 26 seconds for both eyes. Uh, of course, because he's a good refractionist, he doesn't really need to be incredibly accurate. Uh, he's just looking where to start and to see how easy the refraction is going to be. He was using his notes from last time, which does help, I suppose. Let's break it up so that I can give you an insight into what he was thinking. 
I've included the footage from the other cameras uh, to give you an idea of what he's doing. I find it makes it easier to slow it down though because this all happens very quickly. Firstly, he does a horizontal sweep in the right eye which shows a, a medium width movement. Same sort of movement in the other eye too. His vertical sweep in the right eye shows slightly less width movement. It's always good to check what is happening in the other eye. It's really important to stop the other eye accommodating. So it's good to keep adding plus to blur both eyes to stop the patient accommodating. This patient can't accommodate, but Michael still does it. It's a good habit to get into. After a lot of practice and experience, you'll be able to guess how much plus to add based on how wide the reflex is. Also, did you notice how he quickly checks both meridians of the right eye? He will have noticed that the vertical sweep is thinner than the horizontal one. It's important to measure both meridians in quick succession, rather than doing one meridian, then move on to the other after completing the first. This way, you get much quicker at it. He now knows he's going to be looking at against the rule of stigmatism after only three sweeps. His first lens has to be higher than the maximum plus so that he can work in minus cylinder. I recommend that you work in a minus cylinder when refracting with trial lenses. It's much easier to control accommodation uh, that way because the patient can easily accommodate when the, plus, when the plus sills are swapped too slowly in a trial frame. He goes for a plus four in both eyes. Let's continue. First, the horizontal sweep shows a quick against movement and the vertical sweep a thinner against move. Quick flash up and down with the uh, horizontal sweep is inconclusive. The ret reflex is moving so fast that he can't be sure if it's neutral or if it's against. There's a good way to find out by reversing the vergence of light coming out of the retinoscope by pushing the collar up to the top. Now it's easy to see that the horizontal is too much plus because of the distinct width movement that he sees. This is such an important tip. I'm always pushing the collar up to reverse the reflex. I've seen many students miss huge sills because they're not good at spotting large against movements. It would be so much easier to do retinoscopy if we refracted in plus cylinder. When I worked in the hospital doing cyclo retinoscopy in children, I always did retinoscopy in plus cylinder. I found it much easier to be accurate that way. And of course, I was prescribing from my retinoscopy and didn't have to do any subjective. Let's continue. Remembering that all the reflexes are moving in the opposite direction now. He changes the sphere down to plus 350. Now the horizontal sweep is showing neutral. It's time to move on to the cylinder component. Quick check of his notes, no doubt, uh, to see what the sill axis and power was last time. See how he tightens the streak a touch here. This causes the slit to narrow. That's so that he can more easily see the axis of the cylinder. He makes a slow sweep in the vertical meridian, aligning his streak with the reflex that he's seeing. So he's finished the right eye. Uh, he removes the plus 150 working lens from the total. A good tip here is that you don't need to use a working lens. Just change the sphere at the end. This reduces the amount of surfaces you are shining the ret through. This can be the difference between seeing a reflex or not in a patient with a bit of cataract and small pupils, which is very common in old people. Although I often hold a plus 150 over the patient's last prescription or autorefractor result if I'm being particularly lazy and uh, want to make a quick check only, it really depends on your preference. But think about your reasons for doing it and what is needed in each case. It always made me smile when I was teaching at the uh, university. The, the students were taught to put a plus 150 working lens in the back cell of the trial frame right 
at the start of the retinoscopy. This is not really recommended as it means that your spheres will be at the wrong back vertex distance because they are not in the back cell, they're in the cell in the front. It's not a good idea to remove the working distance lens at this stage though because if the patient was younger they could accommodate. Obviously in this case the patient doesn't have any accommodation so it's probably okay. Now onto the left eye. He quickly reverses the streak. The horizontal sweep maybe shows a slight width movement and the vertical sweep much more of a width movement. Pretty much like the other eye, I would say. Quick check of the notes to see what axis and sill power it was last time. It's very close to neutral in both meridians now. Close enough to get on with the refraction, he decides. Uh, nothing to be gained by spending more time on the retinoscopy. Notice how he took a little bit more off for working distance. Uh, a plus 175 in this case rather than his usual plus 150. This is because of the slight width movement he saw in both meridians when he had finished the retinoscopy, no doubt. He's taken a minute and a half to do both eyes. Admittedly, with the use of his notes, he knows now knows what type of refraction it's going to be from the quality of the reflex as well, which is a great reason to do retinoscopy, I'd say. Let's go through the masterclass tips to summarize. Uh, try to do retinoscopy on everybody, so you know what sort of refraction is to come. Overplus both eyes to stop accommodation. Check both meridians in quick succession. Reverse the collar with movements are easier to see. Tighten the collar to measure the axis. Move closer at neutral to check that both meridians show with movements. Don't use a working lens if the reflex is dim. Hope you enjoyed this masterclass. Uh, I'm sure that there are some more tips I could give you, but they aren't obvious from Michael's excellent work. Hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Please subscribe to my channel, then you'll be notified when I make my next one. See you next time.